The powers that be assigning this to me today was a good reminder that I really need to get my passport renewed before my next vacation. This ooky spooky girly is venturing to California for the first time this year, and since I'm Canadian, my passport kind of needs to be in order first. Also, today's list is courtesy of places the Canadian government is currently saying avoid all travel to, so if your country is different or on this list, I apologize. So we're starting off today with Myanmar. So there might be heightened tensions in this area on and around February 1st, so I think that just passed, which was the third anniversary of the 2021 military coup. Pro-regime demonstrations were possible, including at the Mahabandula Park in Kayuk Tara Township. There might have also been counter demonstrations. Now attacks by and against security forces are possible, and attacks against regime affiliated personnel, businesses, and facilities could not be ruled out. Protests could take place and turn violent at any time, and security forces could use excessive and lethal force to retaliate and disperse crowds. Back in 2021, that coup was because the military detained officials from the elected government and declared a state of emergency, effectively seizing control of the country's governance. Martial law has been imposed in several townships and curfews are in place at specific locations and gatherings are banned. Demonstrations take place regularly across the country, specifically in Yangon and Mandalay. Security forces have been using excessive and lethal force, which has resulted in multiple casualties. Civil unrest and acts of politically motivated violence might occur anywhere and at any time, particularly leading up to and during days or events of national significance. Improvised explosive devices have been used throughout the country, including in major cities such as Yangon, Mandalay, and Nai Pitao. Further attacks targeting public venues frequented by foreigners such as shopping malls, markets, hotels, bars, and restaurants are likely. The political situation remains unpredictable and could deteriorate further. Clashes between the military and armed groups are ongoing in several border regions, which has caused the displacement of hundreds of thousands of civilians to neighboring countries. Landmines are also a danger, particularly in border areas, because they can be found in many different regions and pose a significant risk to your safety. Since October of last year, there's been an escalation of conflict in several different areas. Multiple armed resistance groups have attacked regime security forces. There's also been an increase in the number of attacks and regime airstrikes, which has resulted in civilian casualties. The armed conflict is expected to continue and could expand to other states and regions and escalate. So, with all that being said, the security situation is highly volatile, and additional violent attacks could occur at any time across the country. Violent clashes between regime security forces and armed groups have resulted in, just a couple ideas, significant internal displacement, disrupted access to supplies, cash and goods, border crossing closures, and casualties. Back in 2017, there were coordinated attacks on police and security forces in northern states, and since December of 2018, serious armed clashes between armed groups and the military have been occurring everywhere, including the popular tourist destination of Mokyu. Detonations of improvised explosive devices have taken place in Sitwe Township and on the road between Sitwe and Marakyu. Travel to parts of the country, including to and from land border crossings, are strictly controlled by the government. So because of this, there are some parts of the country where Canadian embassy officials aren't allowed to travel freely without permission from the government. So the Canadian embassy's ability to deliver assistance, including in an emergency, might be limited or delayed, which makes it a not so fun place to travel. Next up, time to not travel to Haiti. The government says to avoid all travel due to the threat posed by kidnappings, gang violence, and the potential for civil unrest throughout the country. The current security situation is pretty volatile. Back in October of last year, the government of the Dominican reporter did reopen its air border, but land and sea borders remain closed to travelers. Now, if you're a Canadian citizen like myself and you're gonna arrive from the Dominican Republic, you can only enter Haiti by air. The Embassy of Canada in Port-au-Prince cannot help anybody enter the Dominican Republic from Haiti by land or sea. The security situation is also extremely volatile. Gang violence tends to be concentrated in certain areas, such as the capital, Port-au-Prince, and extends to the Artibonite region. Gangs are increasingly attacking residential neighborhoods and kidnapping groups of people, since armed gangs tend to control most of Port-au-Prince. Police presence across the country is limited and not guaranteed. Gatherings by protesters are spontaneous and unpredictable, and sometimes lead to clashes with security forces and violent acts. Protesters may suddenly erect roadblocks and burn barricades, disrupting major roads in various regions, which includes the area around the embassies. Access to toussaint Louverture International Airport could be affected, and it could also affect telecommunications and interweb access, which is kind of important. Also, the country is experiencing significant shortages with fuel, water, food, 
which are necessities, also with access to cash and commodities, and emergency services and healthcare are highly affected. There are two international airports in the country, which can be difficult to access due to the highly volatile security situation. Also, crime rates are high in large centers, which is where armed gangs operate, and this is also affecting near the border with the Dominican Republic. Oh, by the way, there's also been an increase in home invasions, which generally occur in middle-class neighborhoods, but have increased in number in affluent neighborhoods in Port-au-Prince and outside Petionville. Petty crimes such as pickpocketing and purse snatching also occur. Criminality increases in the periods leading up to the holiday season in December, Carnival in February or March, and the beginning of the school year in late August or early September. Foreigners are viewed as wealthy and might cause for these crimes to pick up. So due to the local environment, security forces aren't going to be able to provide emergency assistance in time. Armed robberies tend to occur regularly in Petionville, and in most cases, armed thieves on motorcycles attack their victims in broad daylight. By the way, the attacks have been increasing, particularly against motorists, and they occur during peak hours. Oh, and I almost forgot, armed gangs have set up roadblocks to commit robberies and demand payments along Route Nationale 2 from Martisant to Miragouin. They're also fighting to control the main highways connecting port au prince to northern areas. Criminal activities are also widespread near the border with the Dominican Republic, and armed gangs operate along the border, controlling many of the roads leading to said border. So, not fun. Oh, by the way, there's also kidnapping problems. They tend to target both local people and foreigners, including dual citizens who live or travel in Haiti, regardless of rank or social class. Since September of 2020, hundreds of Canadians and other foreign nationals have been abducted. We're talking missionaries, aid workers, even young people are victims. Most people are released in exchange for ransom, but there are some people that have just disappeared, and if you see like, oh, a peaceful demonstration, yeah, those can turn violent at any time, which can also lead to disruptions to traffic and public transportation. Overall, no thank you. Alrighty, we're moving on to Venezuela. The government says that due to the significant level of violent crime, the unstable political and economic situations, and the decline in basic living conditions, including shortages of medication, gasoline, and water, you might want to avoid this area as a travel destination right now. The security environment isn't doing the best at the border due to the ongoing dispute between Venezuela and Guyana due to an ongoing dispute over a certain region. Armed criminal groups frequently operate on both sides of the border with Colombia, conducting illegal activities such as smuggling, substance trafficking, black market sales, and more things I can't mention on the internet. There is a high military presence in a number of municipalities located along the border, but general lawlessness, particularly in the area within 20 kilometers of the Colombian border, increases the risk of extortion and kidnapping. Smuggling and illegal mining also occur along the borders. The international airport in Maiketsia is dangerous, by the way. In Incidents of violent crime occur frequently, both inside the facilities and in the surrounding areas. Kidnappers and armed robbers have targeted foreigners, who are assumed to be holding large amounts of foreign currency, so criminals often approach tourists at the airport and offer to exchange money, or also pose as taxi drivers. Which by the way, I didn't know this before today, Venezuela has one of the world's highest homicide rates. Because that's not scary at all. Violent crimes are pretty common throughout the country but tend to happen pretty frequently in the capital city of Caracas. I'm sorry if I got that wrong, I swear I looked it up. Violence against locals and visitors alike can occur in both urban and rural areas, including those popular with tourists. Organized criminal groups and gangs are pretty rampant, and many criminals carry firearms. Not good. Authorities such as the police, airport, immigration, have harassed and extorted money from travelers. Police response times are poor or non-existent in most parts of the country, and most reported crimes don't result in prosecution. Express kidnappings are frequent and can occur anywhere in the country. There have been instances of motorists being robbed after stopping to assess the damage to their vehicles from improvised spikes on the road or stone throwing. But by the way, if you're going to take public transit, there is a very high risk of theft on the subway, and there's a lot of subway stations that are just unsafe. So overall, this is a big no-no for me. Okie dokie, moving on to Belarus. To quote the government, avoid all travel due to the risk of arbitrary enforcement of local laws and the local conflict between Russia and somewhere else that I shouldn't be mentioning. The ability of the Embassy of Canada to Poland to provide consular services in this area is extremely limited because Russian forces are conducting military operations from there. Several countries, including Canada, have imposed sanctions on Belarus for its role in said conflict. Certain international companies suspended their operations in the country. Projectiles from the armed 
conflict that is in a nearby country have landed in the region near the border, flight options to leave Belarus are very limited because the, because the situation could deteriorate further at any moment. The ability of the Embassy of Canada to Poland to provide consular services is extremely limited, and while demonstrations are now less frequent, authorities are still actively targeting political opposition, journalists, and individuals perceived to be critical of the government, even for activities that took place out of the country. So local authorities might enforce local laws in an arbitrary manner. By the way, if you're a journalist, Game over. There's reports of intimidation, harassment, and violence against local and foreign journalists. A lot have been detained and have had their equipment confiscated. On May 23rd of 2021, the local government forced the diversion of a commercial flight under false pretenses to arrest a journalist. So since then, there's been a lot of countries, including Canada, which have told their airlines to avoid this airspace due to serious safety and security concerns. Because of this, air transportation options to leave this country are going to be restricted. Oh, and by the way, debit and credit card fraud, pretty common. Yeah, no thanks. And finally, time to talk about Yemen. To quote the Canadian safety keepers, they say to avoid all travel here due to ongoing armed conflict, attacks, and kidnapping. The security situation is highly unstable due to the ongoing civil war between government forces and different rebel groups throughout the country. A coalition of countries is launching airstrikes into Yemen to curtail rebel gains in the country. Which, by the way, those could occur anywhere, anytime. Weapons are also easily available and local groups are usually heavily armed. The government of Canada has urged Canadians to leave Yemen since May of 2009, which when you do the math, it's been a minute. Commercial means to leave the country are extremely limited though, and the airport in the capital is not open for commercial flights. A state of emergency was declared in 2011 and remains in effect. Crucial infrastructures are significantly damaged, including hospitals and accessing essential services and goods such as food, water, medical supplies, extremely difficult. In late January of 2022, armed rebel groups launched airstrikes into the United Arab Emirates. Armed rebel groups launched a lot of airstrikes and the coalition of countries has responded with further attacks, which has resulted in a lot of casualties. Now the possibility of further attacks, including against civilian targets, remains high. Also the border with Saudi Arabia is regularly affected by ongoing conflicts. And that brings the stand over time and I think I'll stick to checking places off my bucket list that uh, are in the United States and Europe for safety. For now, thanks. I've been Alexa and if you enjoyed my ramblings today, could you help us out by giving this video a like, subscribing if you aren't already, hit the bell for more recommendations from us here at Top 5 Scary Videos, and I'll see you all next time you lovely spooky people.